Hey, what's up, sports fans? Matt and Ryan here. This is the DFS Five Pack. Thanks for watching. Um, sub to the channel if you're new to it. Ring the bell for notifications. Uh, thumbs up are always appreciated. We're going to talk about Marquise Hollywood Brown, the Baltimore Ravens today. Uh, made this video last week, but Skype has been acting really weird lately. Like usually, when you get done, uh, your videos just pop up, and this one's been like lost in the shuffle. So, I guess we'll go round two on Marquise Hollywood Brown and the Baltimore Ravens. At least a lot of times when we have to duplicate these videos, they're like right after. And remember that with the, it almost brings back good, bad memories of like having to duplicate a members only video because that sucked. But I would give anything to make a members only video with you right now. Oh my God. I just can't wait for DFS to come back. We'll touch on this at the end of the video as we were just kind of talking briefly about football, basketball, baseball, um, what we think is going to happen, which again, we have absolutely no idea. So uh, we'll talk about Hollywood Brown and then stay tuned at the end. If you want to just get our basic thoughts on DFS and fantasy sports moving forward, this is the 24th of June. It sounds like baseball is coming back. Uh, I think both of our confidence levels are very low. Before we get into that though, golf is back and overlay fantasy sports. One of our show sponsors, or our show sponsor has got PGA contests up. Um, we're 16 hours away from tip off or not tip off. What the hell do you call it in golf? Tee off. Tee off? I, the opening tee off? Well, I guess I don't really know the name of it. Tee off tee sounds off. about right. <laughs> yeah, for sure what it is. Tee off. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, these are up and they are ready to rock. If you are as desperate for sports as we are, I know they are out there. Um, go give it a nice little uh, whirl. Yeah. Let's get it, man. All right. So. We've touched on a couple of the Baltimore Ravens already. Uh, I think actually both times it was your choice to go with Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. We covered both of them. Those videos are out there. Our thoughts are out on those guys. We're going to touch on Hollywood Brown, and I think next we're going to move into uh, the running backs. We're going to start sticking with teams right now, just that way we can keep up some of the coaching thoughts and stuff like that. Uh, I think our thoughts were a little mixed initially when we talked about Hollywood Brown, but by the end of it, we seem to be a little bit more on the same page on what our thoughts are on him. So uh, this should roll a little bit quicker. Uh, once again, subscribe and thumbs up are always appreciated. In regard to the Ravens offense, though, uh, not much new to be concerned with right here. John Harbaugh's been there for a hot minute. We got year two of Greg Roman within the um, – being the offensive coordinator. And as far as injury concerns go, uh, Brown was banged up throughout the season last year. He played most of those games, but no lingering issues that we're worried about. No, uh, you, you feel like with this Ravens team, it's like a year in, they're almost like a, a well-oiled machine, you know, more a year into the process should be a year better all around. You know, another thing they have going for them, and the same goes for the Chiefs, as we've touched on a couple of their guys, it's just not a very good AFC. And they're going to get the ability to play off against a bunch of teams that we don't consider to be very good. There's some teams like your Browns that maybe we have some hope for. Uh, but for what's been kind of the case for about two decades now, it's an overall weak, very weak AFC. So they should win a bunch of football games. No doubt about that. So it's been that. God, it's been that way for a long time now, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, no taking away from the Patriots because whether you love Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, or both of them, but they've had the – if they couldn't have come around at a better time to be this dominant. No doubt about that. Amen. So uh, Brown last year played in 14 games. He started 11 of them. Uh, he's definitely a big play type of fellow. And one thing that we had discussed when we did make the video originally is John Harbaugh, his big challenge for Lamar Jackson in the offseason was to improve upon his deep ball, which was not one of his stronger points in uh, what can only be described as a great season last year. So uh, I'm curious to see what kind of strides that he makes. Obviously, the dude made some massive strides year one to year two. So I don't want to doubt a guy. I mean, maybe that wasn't his forte, but I don't want to doubt a guy that showed this kind of uh, monumental jump year one to year two that he couldn't make some nice strides with the deep ball. No, I'm not saying that he couldn't make some deep strides. Yeah, some nice strides with the deep ball. It's a tongue twister there a little bit. But I will believe it when I see it. I mean, Lamar Jackson, his arm is not his biggest strength. I don't think anyone would argue that. But as you mentioned, he did really improve. He's improved every year he's played football, it seems. But especially the progress he's made since he's been with NFL coaching. Now you add a Hollywood Brown who's a, you know now a year into the system, a year, you know, another year to work with him. I guess a little bit different because of Corona. But I'm sure these guys are – or spending as much time and doing whatever they can together. I'm interested, like you are, to see if Lamar can take that next step with his deep ball. I'm more of in the camp, I'll believe it when I see it. But to your point, there is no real reason why we shouldn't believe that he'll take at least some significant strides. We're not going to say he's going to be a 
the best deep ball thrower in the league, but he should make some strides for sure. Right. So I actually, this is just a great like microcosm of how we view sports in a lot of ways. You are a little bit more of the, I'll believe it when I see it. And I'm a little bit more of a, I don't know, I'm trying to go out on a limb with young guys where you have a little bit more belief in veteran guys. And again, sometimes you're right, sometimes I'm right. That's just the nature of sports in general, and I think you'll see that with everybody. So maybe I am going to be a little bit more of a believer early on. Uh, and then, like we've seen a million different times with a million different issues, you know, uh, you might see something in game two, and then you might be the bigger believer in him, you know, throwing the deep ball moving forward. So it is going to be a fun one for us to watch. Now, a couple of other things that he has going for him, you know, wide receivers, their biggest jump tends to be year two. Maybe him being healthier this year, too, if he doesn't have those little nicks that he had last year, could lead to some great things. So I like, and we'll get into his ADP here in a little bit, I like the potential and the potential upside of where you can get him in the draft. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, I think that the upside is real. We went over some other receivers, like kind of going around where he's going. And there's a lot of guys with upside there. Not sure that that many of them have the upside that he does simply because he's the number one wide out there. Now, he's not going to be used like the prototypical number one wide out. But when all is said and done, he is that guy. Like if they get down and they need to start throwing – I mean, he should definitely be a, a, a big time target monster in that scenario. Not saying that that scenario is going to happen all that often. Another point that you brought up uh, was that Lamar Jackson's number one feature is not his arm, right? It's his legs. What that should do to opposing defenses, though, is create this um, stellar running game with both his legs, but also the running back's ability to run the ball because they're a little bit more confused because there's not there's very few guys that have the weapons that Lamar Jackson's legs do. What that does is create a lot of single coverage down the field because teams and opponents are going to be more scared uh, of the running game than they are going to be the deep ball, which should put him in some advantage, advantageous situations. I'm going to speak to all the Madden players out there. A lot of times when you play online, you play against guys who take the Baltimore Ravens. Now, like me and like a lot of you guys, when you do that, you end up having to run, you know, run a lot of spy, which oftentimes you do not end up with enough deep defenders because that's the part you're least scared about. When I play against somebody who's still a good thrower of the football and uses Lamar Jackson, I have no way to stop him because there's just only so many things you can do from a defensive perspective to stop those guys. He creates those mismatches. So if he can develop that deep ball, you know, Hollywood Brown is not a guy that's going to be double covered on a routine basis. No, he's not. They just there's only so many guys on defense to match up with the weapons that Baltimore has. You had another guy, potentially J.K. Dobbins, to this offense. So yeah, Baltimore potentially could be even better. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson taking a step, taking another step forward. The one thing I'll say about Hollywood Brown is you put in. I love the point that we talk about a lot. Second year wide receiver, it's a big jumping point. Wide receivers often take off in their second year. Then you also add the maturation process of Lamar Jackson. It can mean big things for Hollywood Brown. I can also see him having monster weeks and then not doing a lot other weeks because T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, T.Y. Hilton, very much in the T.Y. Hilton sense. It's a good comparison. Yeah, that's the second you said that, I knew you were going, and that's the first guy that came to my mind, you know, kind of that big play threat where, you know, week one he goes for eight catches, 180 yards, and two touchdowns. In the next two weeks he combines for 80 yards. Yeah, I see that. I mean, maybe he's more consistent, but I also don't think Baltimore needs to throw a lot, and he's not like a big target. Like, you know, he's not going to be a target monster. When I said that earlier, I just meant that he's the number one receiver. Another potential hiccup that, again, I'll, I'll take the Balvin approach here. I'll believe it when I see it. There are Antonio Brown rubblings in Baltimore, so that could be an absolute game changer for him. Yeah, I mean, then, you you know, you talk about, well, there will be zero double coverage. And, you know, he's going to be in much better matchups. But with how little Baltimore will probably throw and how big of a target monster Antonio Brown is, like, it just that will really hurt anyone else there. Exactly. So, again, we'll, we'll watch. Uh, we're here at the end of June. we got a lot of time to take a look at that, even if the NFL season plays out. Uh, outside of that, though, you know, you mentioned J.K. Dobbins briefly. Not a lot to talk about as far as additions or subtractions when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, you know, honestly, they were a really good football team last year that uh, I know a lot of people didn't like what Lamar Jackson said about taking Tennessee softly and lightly, but they seemed to take Tennessee softly and lightly, and they got their feet, you know, the, Derrick Henry smashed him right in the mouth, and the Tennessee Titans looked like the substantially better football team that day. They did. Um, 
So maybe, and hopefully that, well, not hopefully for me, but hopefully for Baltimore fans, they carry that chip on their shoulder this year and they're even better. What did you think of when they saw that? Because I saw a couple of like sports analysts being like, that's not what you say, that's locker room material and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't know, that doesn't bother me. I was like, that just seems like maybe that's an honest assessment of the situation, that they were the field themselves, they had a couple of weeks off with the bye and not really playing much in week 17. Just seemed to me like that might just be an honest assessment of the situation. We took them lightly and they punched us in the face. Yeah, from every time I've heard Lamar Jackson talk, he's not like very outspoken. Like he's very honest and he says the truth and he doesn't mind saying the truth. He doesn't really say say what people want to hear, which I respect. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the media, and I get we're desperate right now for things to talk about with no real sports going on, that I, they were just trying to make something out of nothing. It didn't seem like, oh, yeah, they're trash. You know, we were, you know, no, we'll beat right. them every single day. Like, yeah, we took them lightly. They beat our butts. Yeah, Lamar seems very genuine in his, like, words and his actions. Um, he almost seems like a, a kid playing football, if that makes sense. All right, so I want to uh, go back to, you know, the T.Y. Hilton comparison that we make. So – Hilton, um, I'm trying to think of what his ADP was this year, and I don't remember it off the top of my mind, but that's a guy you usually have to go a couple of rounds up on, and you also know for a fact what you're getting with T.Y. Hilton. He's going to win you four games a year uh, and be a massive letdown you know, 10, 11, 12 times uh, just because that's who he's been, and we kind of know that at this point, but you usually have to go a little bit higher up to get him. What I like about Brown is you know, taking this guy in the seventh, eighth round, something like that, um, you could be well aware of the fact that there's going to be weeks he's going to be on your bench. Maybe you don't play him in the right situation. You know, maybe he even is on the waiver wire, you know, three, four, five weeks into the season. But if I can get this guy in around seven, eight, nine, I feel very comfortable with him right there. At that point in your draft, you've pretty much wrapped up the running back position, at least as far as consistency goes. You've got one or two good receivers on your team if you draft it appropriately. Uh, and he gives you potential upside. Because at the end of the year, if Hollywood Brown is, a, you know, the 15th best wide receiver – Fantasy-wise, I'm not shocked by that in the slightest. No, I'm not shocked by that either at all. I'm with you. Um, I do see, like, some T.Y. Hilton in him. I also see potentially some Tyreek Hill, like, with his speed, um, his big play potential. I don't want to just put that out there because Tyreek Hill is very special. But Hollywood Brown is good, man. Like, he was really special in college. I'm not saying that, like, you don't know it. But I think you're right. People might be sleeping on a little bit him a little bit just because of the offense he's in but if Lamar can develop that deep ball it can mean big things for him you know and as great as Lamar's legs are it would be smart of him yeah to not want to run the ball for whatever he ran 1200 1100 yards last year and get you know a little more uh what's the best word I'm looking for here pro style or pro level with his ability to throw the ball I was gonna Have say those legs are seasoned yeah, like seasoned with his throwing ability. Like, I'm with you. Like, the Ravens, not even just him, need to monitor his, his rushing workload. Right? Like, he's a little different. You know, RG3 came in, set the world on fire his rookie season. And, you know, he had the legs to go with it. Uh, and then that opens up the throwing lanes and everything like that. And then he had that bad injury. He didn't want to run the ball anymore, and he was no good. Cam Newton took a lot more pounding than Lamar Jackson did because he's more speed and size, whereas Jackson is just shifty and as fast as you could possibly imagine. I didn't see him take a lot of big hits last year, and I think you would agree with that part. Yeah, Cam Newton is like their goal line back, too, like in a lot of situations, so different type of runners for sure. Yeah, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that I watched the Ravens the way I watched the Packers and I caught every single play, but I feel like I maybe caught – one-third of the Ravens' offensive plays last year because I was just intrigued by them and I enjoyed watching them. I never really saw Jackson take a big hit, but it only takes that one, right? And when you're out there and you're exposed, uh, guys like Christian McCaffrey, Barry Sanders, Lamar Jackson, they don't take big hits, but it doesn't mean they can't take that one and they can absolutely yeah. change the trajectory of your career. For sure. I mean, uh, yeah, all it takes is one. So, I don't know. Ultimately, to uh, you know, kind of wrap this one up, I think we did, you know, after talking this one out twice, I think we see him very similar. I think a big thing for me, and I've discussed this for years now, I go very running back heavy early in the draft. I usually wait on tight ends and quarterbacks, which means Hollywood Brown falls right into the draft where I'm going to be loading up on wide receivers that have upside, and he is an upside guy to me. Expect him to be on at least half of my teams this year. I like it, man. I definitely want some exposure as well. So, all right, we wanted to quickly touch on, again, it's the 24th of June today. 
Uh, sounds like maybe I've been trying not to follow it too closely because I'm almost like I don't want to get too excited. That's how I've been. All right. Sounds like baseball, though, is like it's going to happen. I mean, that's the word as of the 24th of June, huh? Yeah, that's the word that it's supposed to happen. They have like, you know, I guess set date. It's supposed to start like a month from now, basically. Yeah. I'll believe it when I see it, though. Right. So how is this going to affect DFS? Like, I don't think it affects DFS a ton except for the shortness of the season. I mean. What do you mean? But how does it affect DFS? Like, well, because, we're, because it's daily, we're going to have to make adjustments. You know, there's going to be there's slow starters out there that maybe this won't be great for their season-long type of thing. But we're all on an equal playing field. I think that's one of the beauties of daily fantasy sports is whether it's me, you, one of our customers, the guys at, you know, any of the big boy DFS sites, we're all on an equal playing field for, you know, on the daily type of thing. Um, maybe, you know, starting pitchers, work on shorter rotations because the season is long. But outside of that, like, I just can't see it being a huge change from the DFS perspective. I'm not sure. So I agree with you. Like, it's daily. So, like, whatever adjustments that will have to be made will be made, and it will just seem like it's normal. But you made a point, like, your pitchers and stuff like that. Like, that stuff I'm not sure about because I don't know how these teams are going to use guys because it is different. 50, 60 games is a lot different than 162 games. Um, baseball is a grinded out type of sport where you really, you, you, you play yourself into the best you can. Uh, baseball is weird in this type of short environment. Uh, I'm interested to see how it plays out. I think it will be different for DFS because life is different. Everything is different, right? Like every single thing in life is different right now, but it's not going to be like, I don't know. I agree with you in, in an overall sense. I, I think I don't know. It's just it's interesting to talk about. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some intricacies. Damn, can't talk today within the game. That'll be different this year. No questions about it. And I think you will see some very good, you know, ball players, guys who at the 162 games always have monster stats with some really crappy years. And then I also yeah. think you're going to see some guys who start fast that are going to have career years, quote unquote, based on what there is that maybe get overpaid, not realizing that their numbers, you know. It might be a good year for a contract year for some people and a really bad year to be a contract year for others. And it also, like, the games mean a ton more now, you know? Yeah, that's but kind of exciting. It is. Like, usually in baseball, we you brush it off. One in 162 games, it just doesn't mean that much. I mean, it does because then they all add up, but it doesn't. You, you know, always talk about, like, uh, you know, every team in baseball will – they play 162 games. We'll lose 50 and win 50. It's what you do in those other 62. Well, now there basically is those other 62. That's all there is. It'll be real interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking of the Orioles right now, going back to what you said. Yeah. Like, you win 50, you lose 50. Like, so they lose all the other 62? That is the saying. <laughs> I did not make up the saying. That is the saying. Um, good That's point. It's more just a burn on Baltimore. For sure. I mean, Listen, I'm the biggest baseball fan ever, so I want baseball back. But I'm also like a baseball purist, so part of me feels very uneasy about this, not going to lie. Um, what it is at this point is we're desperate for entertainment. I, I will not take a ton out of this year, you know, as far as – this is one where this, this season to me is more of an asterisk than the NBA. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Well, yeah, they didn't even start it yet for sure. Assuming it played out, I mean, my thought on that is – Baseball is a game of runs, right? Like, we've seen teams, you know, be 500 at the end of July, go on sick runs in August and make yeah. the playoffs. Like, there's just not as many ups and downs that you have an opportunity to have when the season is shortened by over 50%. I just don't think we're going to get a real, like, a, like a real, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I think you need 162 games or however many, maybe not that, that exact long, 150 games to – really know how good teams are. Um, and I just think it's selling them short with 60 games. Now, also, that's all we can do because, like I just said, everything in life is different right now. So I'm certainly not complaining about it. Um, right. We're desperate for the entertainment at this point and for us for the income, man. Like, I mean, that, that's our life right there. So, I mean, we're desperate for that part too. But for the entertainment aspect of it, like I sincerely miss being able to crack a beer and watch the Brewers at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, man, I can't wait for that. It is going to feel weird, though. Like, I don't know, 60 games. It's 
you got to start out hot. You got to play well. Um, it's going to be different. There's going to be some teams in the postseason this year that have no business being postseason MLB teams, but that's what it is. That's why, for me, it's different than the NBA because the NBA renew darn well when the season called it quits that the Lakers, Clippers, and the Bucks were the best three teams, right? Like there was a lot of other good teams, but that was kind of the, the, the trio of the best teams out there. And they're there. They're in the playoffs. You know, good chance those are the teams battling it out at the end that it could be Milwaukee. You know, it's possible that a, that a Boston or a Philly or something like that kind of steps it up and over, you know, takes them down or something like that. But we knew who the best teams were. They're seated that way properly. Most of the regular season had an opportunity to play out. Now we just need teams to uh, not get taken out early, knock the rust off, and play each other. But like you said, like that's their own. I mean, if they do, I don't want to say it's their own fault, but I mean, they could have gotten knocked out if the season had just continued like normal, you know? It's possible, but like if the Lakers lose in round one to whoever it is that they play, I, I struggle to think that's what would have happened if the season had played out normal. I agree. That doesn't mean it wouldn't have, and it doesn't mean, like, you're right. It doesn't mean the inverse couldn't have happened. I'm just really, really, like, if Milwaukee or either of the L.A. teams loses in the first round to some team that, you know, whoever it is that they end up playing, I'm just not going to be able to go to bed at night and think that's the way it would have played out. I, I could be wrong, and I'll never know the flip side of it, but that's one of the fun parts about sports. I just won't be able to believe it. I, I, I'm with you. I mean, if that happens, I'm with you. Gotcha. So... You know, at this point, you know, I, I'd say if you're a betting man, but I think everybody watching this video knows you clearly are a betting man. Uh, what's going to happen? Is the NFL going to play? Yeah, the NFL will play. Um, okay. The NFL will play. Baseball, I'm not so sure about, but the NFL will play. Okay. Um, the NFL is the one that's starting to scare me just to slide us a little bit right now. And God, do I hope it plays. God, oh, man, I can't even imagine a year without the NFL. Um, I, I like your confidence, so I'm going to just – I'm not like – 100% it's going to play. I'm just like, you asked me if I bet a side. I would bet it's okay. playing. What would you put the odds at? Probably 70-30. All right. All right. I like the 70-30. I was hoping you'd say 99 and you had talked to Roger Goodell about this, but I'll live with the 70-30 at this point. Well, one of my buddies that I went to high school with uh, like owns a big ticket company called SeatGeek. It's like big tickets like across the country. He started it. And so he's got big connections in the NFL. And he, okay. through my high school chat with like 10 guys he has been like the nfl is come like you know all of us are scared about the nfl coming back and he's like it's coming back he's not positive but he's like he put the odds at 80 percent. so he's got more in the know than any than me so i'll believe him and clearly more than me as well so okay good i, I like the sound of that that makes me feel a little bit more warm and fuzzy we shall see oh man just give me something to watch right like it's nice to think that in a month from today we could be watching baseball with the NBA starting shortly after that. And then just another, you know, shortly a month over that, we're going to get some football and everything like that. Oh, I know a lot. I feel in a lot of ways that this break from sports has been a good thing for me and probably for a lot of people out there. Maybe reminded you of some other passions and loves that you had, things that you maybe you, you don't need to watch sports seven nights a week. You know, I was talking to a guy yesterday and I was saying, you know, for me, like watching NBA three or four nights a week, I can still do this job as long as I can. You know, check out some highlights, read some box scores, you know, check out some, you know, statistical analysis and things like that. And do some other things a couple nights a week as opposed to just watching NBA seven nights a week. For sure. No doubt about that. So, I don't know. Maybe that came out with some other people as well, but we will see. Anyways, guys, that's our thoughts on Hollywood Brown and just some real brief touching on where we think the uh, sports seasons are going to go from this. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, uh, one of the running backs here for the Baltimore Ravens. Actually, you know what, Bellman? What do you say we do both running backs together? Let's do it. All right, guys. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Thanks, guys.